Space News, April 25, 2024. Hello again. Thank you for being here with me once more. I hope you are very well today. I am Marie. This information can be seen as science fiction, or as the viewer sees best, and I post it for entertainment purposes only. Still, I take my information very seriously, and for whoever has eyes to see. Last Saturday, April 20, 2024, we celebrated Keisha of Era's birthday here. She is one of the lead Shinanim girls who are part of Alanim's and Nishera's guards. Her birthday was celebrated in the Red Piano Room, here in Talika. As she requested, it was not too big, as it was only for the crew members of Talika, with no external guests from the other Tejetan ships. We shared nice food and a nice chocolate cake, and it was an enjoyable moment, and she was very happy. Moving to the next piece of news. The situation with the Atorthans is as follows. Since they arrived for an auditory at the end of last year, there has been a steady increase in the presence, around Earth, and near the planet, of nearly all kinds of grey extraterrestrials, all of them belonging to the Orion Council. Their presence here is welcomed by the local Galactic Federation as they see this as a step forward to improving the Federation's relationship with the Orion Council. Yet, we don't see an increase in grey alien presence as indicative of anything other than their expansionist tendencies and probable plans, because you don't need so many representatives in the first place, and in the second, what they are doing here is quite obscure at this point, as the Federation only informs us that those are all on diplomatic missions here, improving their communication and relationship with all the existing Federation star races, stationed around planet Earth. At the same time, the Irma has issued a warning to the local Federation, stating that what they are seeing is a passive takeover of this region of space, where their presence build up is progressively seen as normal, while they go imposing their points of view, influencing everyone in this region, all to their advantage, with no necessity of any kind of hostile takeover. The only kind of grey extraterrestrial which has not increased in number in this region, are the Zeta Greys, which are not Orion Council members, and operate on Earth and around it with normality. The presence of Zeta Greys, who are also known as Little Gardeners, is always quite large on Earth as they are the appointed guardians of planetary biology. Zeta Greys are quite harmless, although they are also quite disrespectful and unempathetic towards the people they take, mostly for medical reasons, in favor of the abductee. All this without mentioning that there are many species of little grey aliens, where many of them look a lot like Zeta Greys, but are in fact biological robots, in favor of several races, nearly all of them of reptilian lineage. Those are considered only to be assets of other star races, and are considered almost as biological drones, so they are not considered as a species, as they do not have a culture of their own either. In other news, the situation with the Tejetan ships is as follows. Talika running normally and functioning properly after her three to four month long repair and service by the supply and maintenance ship, Saska 1. She appears to be running normally, and there is no longer anything major to repair, except for the forward port side internal service elevator which no one seems to be able to fix, or even cares to attempt a repair as we are all used to living without it. Saska 1, this morning de docked from Talika's port side, and moved to dock with Asterope, just a few miles away, in a slightly higher orbit, as she will be aiding the repair of loose hull plates, some of which surround the engine housings at her stern. Then they will proceed to install human telecommunications equipment inside Asterope, mostly workstations, and their computers. 
Then they will also continue to do the same for Vigilant Eagle which is halfway through having her human communications and computers installed inside. And this takes me to the next point. My friends at CIC have told me about several theories that are being shared over social media, related to our artificial intelligence. Please know this. The advanced, quantum holographic computers that run these starships are not connected to the human internet in any way. This is very important. Whenever someone is, or was in contact with my group, they were always talking, and are always talking to a biological person, never to any type of artificial intelligence, not to advanced Tejetan, or any human equivalent. The system Tejetan quantum holographic computers use is not compatible in any way with the digital systems found in human computers, and their connection interface is a real nightmare. Whenever it was said that our computers would take over, it would be only at a theoretical level at this point, as the quantum holographic computer, to digital human computer, communication link and interface problem would have to be solved first. Furthermore, advanced Tejetan artificial intelligence does not have as much control over any aspect of our lives, systems, and communications, as human artificial intelligence does on Earth. We have another concept for artificial intelligence, and we know better before granting it too much control, or full control over critical aspects of our culture, and lives. This means that the real decision-making will always come from a biological Tejetan Lyrian person, and not from a cold computer, no matter how advanced it may be. Also understand something else that is very important, a computer, advanced or not, holographic or digital, is only as good as what was programmed in it, and even if it is sentient, it will always be a reflection of the ethics, values, and culture of its creators. On Earth, human artificial intelligence is invasive, because its creators are so, in Teijita as well as in countless other advanced interstellar societies, artificial intelligence is cooperative, helpful as a tool, and non-invasive. You can learn a lot about a society and culture by observing how its artificial intelligence works and thinks. Whenever the crew of the Asterope and the Alcyone start to enter the human internet, it will be people and not artificial intelligence, with whom you will be interacting. And this subject leads me to say a few words about my YouTube channel and myself. I have never used any type of artificial intelligence to write any one of my subjects, and I will never use one. These words are coming from my biological brain and its connection to source, it is me typing on a human-built keyboard, with my ten little feminine fingers. You can see this is true because I make mistakes, because neither English nor Spanish are my native language, and although I am fluent in both of them, as well as with several other Earth languages, they are all learnt, so my writing is not perfect. It is me, Marie who bothers to sit in front of a computer for hours a day to create content with my head and fingers, and I only use an artificial voice because I am not allowed to talk with my real voice, However even if I could, it would be quite difficult and tiring for me to first write my content, and then talk it with a microphone. But having said that, if I could I would prefer to talk directly with my voice in a podcast manner. So, that's why I use a voice generator. Moving on this subject a little more, my YouTube channel is about what I write, not about the images and little videos I place there, which are only ornaments, and that's why I may repeat them so much, also because they give me a lot of problems with YouTube because of copyright issues, so I must reuse the ones which I know will not give me any problems. I may sometimes use specific images, or some others that may be appropriate for the subject in one or another place in my video, but I do not always have the time to do so. 
I could create much more elaborate videos if I didn't upload new ones daily, but I see no point in doing so, as images are only cosmetic. I could also produce computer-generated images that are closer to what I would want to represent, yes I could, but as I am writing and uploading new subjects daily, I don't have the time to generate them either, at least not right now. But as I said above, my YouTube channel is about what I say in the video and the text I write, not about the images. The same happens to music, I do not use it because it also gives me a lot of problems with copyright issues, even the ones which are supposed to be free of royalties. But please know that I am Marie, and I am the one who is writing, always, and with no electronic aid, because then my content would have no sense and no purpose. This takes me to your kind donations, I do not mention them too much in my videos because I do not want to make my YouTube channel about the money, because it is about the content. I only started to money ties and accept donations out of pure survival necessity, for the complicated reasons I have shared with you in other videos, and I see no need to repeat them here. If I do not money ties and accept donations, then I would not be able to eat, and therefore I would not be able to write, because my needs are not the same as the ones of the Tejitans who do not depend on anything from Earth, but I do, mostly for food. I do not want to produce exclusive content for donors, or for people who pay more, as many YouTube channels do, because, in the first place, I don't have the time to physically write more subjects, as they are heavily taxing for me, my body and brain, and in the second place, I believe all my information should be free for everyone to see. Please know that I am extremely grateful and thankful to all of you who have been supporting me and my group with your donations, even more so with all of you who have repetitively helped me. Thank you, my words of gratitude are not enough, you are literally keeping me alive as this is the only way I can generate any income for all that is needed. A great thank you to all of you who are supporting me through YouTube, Mercado Pago, and through my new PayPal donation link, which is finally up and running after several months of attempts to make it work. This will be all for today. Thank you for watching my video, and for liking, sharing, and subscribing for more. And I hope to see you here next time. With much love, your friend. Marie Swaru.